So we are trying to find creative ways to demonstrate scientific concepts such as uh, ecological resilience and uh, phenotypic plasticity. And for this reason we have created a game where people have just arrived to a land, a, a new land. Um, so they had to work together collectively in their um, group and they had to explore the environment. There were resources scattered um, in this new environment. They had to collect them and then work together um, in order to follow some rules that we gave them. Okay, so you have a new person migrating to your group and he's brought with him a new rule. So you now need to adapt your structure so that it follows the rule that he's brought with him. Um, just one at a time. So you have to hit going back to group and then you can go get another one. The project today was part of crowd control. It was an experiment between art and biology, um, looking at how behaviour patterns uh, build structures in nature. So we had to build this, these shelters. We were in different groups, and we had uh, resources, very limited resources. And in the first half, we were allowed to communicate with our teams. And then in the second half, we weren't allowed to communicate or to have eye contact. And we had very specific instructions, individual tasks. So it changed the dynamic of the way we were working. So I think what's interesting is uh, the link between biology and art and architecture. So I'm looking at biomimicry, which is a term used to describe how biology can be a metaphor in architecture. So as we've seen today, uh, when we're getting in groups of people, the most efficient way to build things is through these grid shells, larger surface area, and this is a, a method which is used in places like the Eden Project, or it could be the Millennium Dome, or it could be Buckminster Fuller's geodesic domes. These things will reference biology in some form.